I'm often asked how can we customize objects in FlexSim. If not for the visual look, well, at least the behavior or how the object performs. So I decided to summarize the different methods that I've used over the past and explain a little bit how each of them work. So a lot of objects in FlexSim look like what we have in reality or close enough to be used as is. For example, there's different types of racking, uh, different types of operators that you can customize the look and, and the clothing, the conveyors. So we have a bunch of things that are close enough or good enough to be used as is, but some are not. For example, if you want to simulate the swing reach truck like the one on the right, well, the standard lift truck in Flexim doesn't look like it at all. But that doesn't mean it can't be used for it, and we'll, we'll get to that. And for example, the, there's a generic processor, which is the green thing here we see, which represents every possible type of machine or processes that you, you could want to model. But if, what if you want to model a pharmaceutical labeler such as this? What, what do you do? What are the different levels of customization? First one is customize the parameters of the objects as they are in FlexSim. Second would be to change the 3D shapes of the object. Third level will be to combine objects together to create a new behavior or new object. Third, the fourth level will be to customize the animation of an object. And the fifth level will be to create custom object from scratch. So as you guess, these go into increasing level of efforts. So it's much easier to just use the, the objects as they are and change parameters than to create a custom object. So, customize parameters. If the visualization is not a priority, but the behavior is, maybe just changing parameters can achieve the desired results. So, for example, these two lift trucks can have completely different speeds, capacity, load time, unload time. I'd add to that completely different behavior in the way they flow through the model and they work through the model. And then a completely different resulting performance at the end, all while having the same 3D image. So in some cases, it's just the parameters that make a difference and not the look. That's one way to, to customize uh, a model and not having to, to invest too much time in, in custom objects. The next level of customization is to change the 3D shape. So if the visualization is an issue, then you can change the 3D shape for something that looks like your reality. But the results will vary greatly depending on if the object has visible moving components or not. So for example, a fixed object like a prop or uh, something that, that's in, in the background and, or a desk or something like that will work perfectly because it's not moving. For a machine, it depends. If you're just changing the image of a static machine for another image of a static machine, then it's going to work great. But if you have a machine with moving parts that you really want to see the parts moving, then it's not going to work that easily. Same thing for material handling. If you have a truck with forks that lift, you can't just change the image and expect the, the forks to move on their own. So the image is not the animation. It's completely different. So we'll, we'll see about that. So for example, you could go from uh, the standard 3D shape, green thing here, to a custom uh, pharmaceutical packaging machine. Or uh, you can change the, the AGV, the standard AGV, which doesn't have any animation. It's just, it's just a static image. And change it for something like a cement truck or flatbed truck they would behave similarly in the sense that they're just moving along they don't have, they don't if you don't mind having moving parts they'll do fine so i'm i'm in flexin now i drag a a very basic shape which are individual tools the lower left and i can change that change its file so this file is called cylinder.3ds so i can just click on anything that's available here for at first like I could take a change that to a wooden chair these are just things I, I recently uh, loaded which have a bed or you just go browse and you go on the internet and you find the file that you want and you put it in so I could be changing the that shape for uh, a bending machine but that's just a prop, okay? So that doesn't have any more parameters than the, the shape I'd put at first. So if I want to go a step further, then I'm going to do the same thing, but for some objects. Like instead of having that 
basic green shape. I can do the same thing. I can change that basic green shape here. Processor.3ds. Go browse in my uh, in my files that I found on the internet. And oops, I've just changed that to a press drill. Uh, so if I click on the press drill, it has the same parameters as the processor has. It's still it's still called processor, by the way. Uh, set up time, process time, uh, capacity, and all the other parameters that, that I would put on a machine, except that I changed the shape. So it's not animated. This is going to be the same static image as the standard processor. So it all, it all works fine. And then you, you can ask me, well, can I do the same for a transporter a lift truck? Then if you look at it, a lift truck, it's not so simple. It's, it doesn't have just one file name because it is composed of multiple parts. It's composed of an operator, a truck, wheels that rotate and lifts that move. So there's at least at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven parts that compose the truck. So then what we have to do if we want to customize it, the simplest way is to take a, a task executor, which is another type of transporter. It's called AGV or task executor. And it has a shape which is called AGV.3DS. So you can go and change its shape to something else. So let's say I go here. Do I have... Well, I can find any type of truck from the internet. And I've put that as the truck. So if I click on it, it's still the same task executor. It, is, it still has the same parameters of speed and everything. But it's not animated. So you won't see the wheels turn and you won't see it articulate in the middle so if you want to do this you'd need the next level up which we'll talk about later but just to show you another example so this is a trans uh, again a task executor that i converted to a loader so all i did was change its name in its 3d image it's called loader.skp which is the file i found on the internet again i put i changed uh, its dimensions and its rotation so now i have change the lift truck for the for a loader but it's not animated if you look closely the wheels are not turning and the shovel is not moving at all it just drops and comes back so maybe that suits your needs because again don't remember you can always change the parameters of the object so whether or not the shovel moves up and down the bucket, I mean, moves up and down. It doesn't really matter. What's important is what's the load time, unload time, and all these things that you put in. So it could behave exactly like you want it to without being animated like you want it to. Now, the third level of customization is to combine objects from the library to create a new look or a new behavior. For example, the, the model I'm going to show you, which you have a snapshot here, is the few conveyors with a few uh, cube shapes, an overhead crane, and a simple custom shape that I used to build it. So I'll show you in Flexim how I did it later. But this is the video. So we have a conveyor coming here, and the conveyor going into the back. <clears throat> and that clamp here that grabs the, the containers is just the hook of the overhead crane which i changed the design for a little for that little shape here that i created and that machine here that we see on the left is just a box so it's just a two boxes with a bo box on top stacked and uh, it results in that look so if i want to build that model from scratch all i need is a couple of straight conveyors And then I can change their, um, their look for belt conveyors. I would also change their length, width, height, speed. Then I, I'm going to put some use some um, static shapes like this, and you know play with them a little bit. Put one on each side. Put one on top. Then I'm going to drag a overhead train. And then if I click on it, I change the look of the hook, the, the shape of the hook, which is now called hook.3ds. I would go and edit the shape. 
and I play with these parameters a little bit and I would end up with this. So I didn't have to create anything new, I didn't have to customize anything new, I just played with the things I had. The next level of customization is to customize the animation of the object itself or create a new animation for an object. So if I look at, at any type of object in FlexSim, in the parameters on the right, there's a button called More Visuals. And in here, there's a place where you can edit the visuals and animation. So let's edit that. So it shows you, it shows you the views from the side, top, uh, front, etc. of the object. And what are the different animations in there? So if I click at the bottom, I can see that there's a truck which is composed of forks, extenders, back wheels, front wheels, and a man. So it has many different parts and it, it has some animations defined here. So, so we can just click. And uh, as you can see what I'm driving, you can see the wheels turning. So if I were to edit and see how it's made in here, I, will, I won't get into the details, but this is how you would edit the animation of, of, of some of the components. So you could create new components, add components, create, uh, change their animations and things like that. So, and if I use that customization of the animation, well, I can create some very interesting things such as here we have the palletizer and then we have even better, we have the wrapper, which we can see its movement going up and down. Really uh, well made. So that was done by somebody at FlexSim and not by me, by the way. So if I click on that machine here, it's still the same logo of the standard processor. Um, and it still has the exact same parameters as a processor. But its animation was customized. So if I were to go to more visuals, edit, and here here I would see that they've created some, some custom objects and... Uh, and they create an anima animation called wrap and it results into this beautiful object. And then the last level of customization is to, would be to create a custom object. As you can get, imagine, this is getting more and more complicated to do. And I have an example that I can show you. So this is, let's say we wanted to build a custom lift truck. Here we started with what's called the basic TE which is a basic task executor, but has to be completely programmed uh, in everything it does. So what we've done here is to create a little bit of, of animation where it goes to a place, it goes up, it turns and it unloads the pallet. So that was very basic, and but you can see where this is going, where we could customize this more and more and more. And so now we reached the question is to what level should we use? When do we use what level or how far do we want to go? So it's always a balance between, you know, visual realism and, and, and effort. Everything could be very closely resembling reality, but maybe you don't have the budget or you don't want to spend that much time creating it. Or maybe it is worth it and, and you do spend that time and money to create that simulation. So what should guide us is, is the objective of the simulation. If the, the simulation serves a, an analysis only purpose to answer some questions, how many equipments do I need? It doesn't need to be visually perfect. But if it serves as a tool, as a sales tool, well, then maybe it is. Or if it sells as a training tool to convince people or to train people, then it, it maybe it needs to be that that far. So it's all a matter of the objectives and the goals and why are we doing this simulation. That'll, that should guide us to how much effort we want to invest in it.